I'm so happy you're back with me again this week. I'm gonna share with you something I get asked all the time and that is what I have in my camera gear. I used to shoot with Nikon and then I switched actually last year to Canon. I went Canon mirrorless, it was a game changer. I wanted something lighter weight, which silly me, I didn't really consider the fact that lenses can't actually get lighter, but the bodies get lighter. So that's been another problem, but I'm gonna share with you a little bit as to kind of why, what's going on there. But I loved my Nikon for years. I should probably shot with my Nikon for about 15 years. And then I was just really impressed with the Canon mirrorless. So now I've switched over and I will share with you everything that I have and what a quick little outline as to what I use each lens for. My name is Kate with Boca Biz and I'm going to be sharing with you every week, probably more than every week actually, to be honest, uh, all the stuff that I struggled with as I was gaining my business and I was growing my photography and improving everything along the way. I learned it the hard way. So I'm gonna help you every time, every week. This bad boy is one of my main cameras that I will pick up for weddings, for portraits, for all sorts of things, because it's very versatile, which is lovely. Uh, it's the 28 to 70, it's uh, 2.0 which is really nice in the low light situations when I get for receptions and stuff like that. I've got it on my Canon R6 and I actually have a battery grip because of weight balance, but I will go into that a lot more uh, in another video when I talk more about this lens and what I use it for. This is my 85 1.2. This is an absolute beauty of a lens. The bokeh in it is just phenomenal. I've never seen anything like it and it is so sharp and crisp. It is um, it hurt my credit card. Yeah, it certainly did. <laughs> I dropped a few, um, a few dollars the day that I got this because I actually also got another camera body at the same time. So I like dual shooting, so I have uh, a variance of lenses without the hassle of switching it out. So this is, this is my bad boy. This is, this is my beast. Uh, one lens that I do have, it's actually on my camera at the moment, is the 38 bill. Uh, 1.8. Unfortunately, Canon hasn't released their 1.2 yet. Uh, it's been delayed for three years now and been on my my watch list on my phone. I've been checking every month or so because once that's there, that is just one of my lenses that I will use all the time. Uh, these are a wonderful. I have. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have spent the coin on it otherwise. I did a portrait for a painting company and I needed wider shots, so I got a 16 mil. So it's you know, sort of like a nifty 50, it's a cheap little lens, but it got me the wide shots that I needed that I couldn't get with my 35 mil, even if I tried splicing them together. Uh, so it got me what I needed. Another lens that I shoot with all the time is my 50 mil 1.2. This is, I, I would say different situations, different, different lenses. So I use this a lot more than I actually anticipated. So I use it a lot for my branding and portraits because I get a nice little bokeh in the background without it being too, I don't have to have too much of a distance between me and the subject where I needed with my 85. So this is a really nice balance between getting, oh, I'll show you my cleaning gear in a minute. Uh, a really nice way of getting that bokeh, getting a little bit of um, fuzz in the background, a little bit out of focus, and it really, it's really, it's crisp on your eyes. You can lock that in, it's really sharp, it is, it's a money lens, especially for branding and portraits. Uh, for instance, when I'm when I'm photographing a wedding, I always shoot with two cameras, like I mentioned. I'll have one on um, my right hand side, which is sort of my main camera, and that's my 35 mil. I always shoot with uh, my other side. I will always shoot with my 85. I just I like having that difference in distance and the quality of the images. They're very different um, from one uh, perspective to the other. So I really like those combinations. Since I got the 28 to 70 that earlier this summer, that has actually been a fantastic lens. It's sort of taken over from my 35 mil, especially on a wedding day, because I can get the, between the 28 to 70, that is a huge focal length to be able to capture when I can't move my feet. And I'll show you some of my behind the scenes videos at some point. And you'll, I'm, I'm like doing this all the time. I'm like running around my subject, I'm back and forth, back and forth. So when my feet can't zoom for me, I now have a lens that zooms for me, which is wonderful. Other things I've invested in is some really amazing lights. So this is just the Canon uh, 580 EX2. Honestly, wasn't overly excited about this one. I don't like how the controls are just a real 
pain in the ass to be honest. Uh, though last year I upgraded my on-camera flash if it's going to focus on this. No, it's not going to. That's fine. <laughs> I can tell you what it is. Uh, this is the Pro Photo, the A1, and it is it is an incredible lens. It is t completely taken my flash photography from like, I hate doing this, I'll do it when I have to, to like, oh my god, yes. I'm so excited for when someone wants to do more of that like harsh light, retro vibe, whatever it might be. I get to use this and it is phenomenal. It's super easy to work with. It's just so complimentary. You don't have like harsh, overblown highlights with, it's just, it, trust me, it's worth the investment. I've also got a Pro Photo, the B10, and that is phenomenal for, especially for my portraits, because I need to have great studio lighting. And that is a really nice balance between that. And then even with this Pro Photo, I can shut, I can, set this up on my trigger and so I can have both lights going at the same time if I need to which is kind of wonderful because I live in Vancouver where it's dark and dreary for about 80% of the year. <laughs> One thing I need to remember to tell you about is my diffuser is phenomenal. This is a Magmod and it literally it's squishy and it can pop on and off. It just literally magnets to my flash and I use this for all of my flashes actually and it is the most incredible diffuser that I've ever used. It just it softens the light that nobody wants as harsh, which is wonderful. Um, somewhere here, I also have another grid. It's like a grid that goes over top and it will give more of a like direct beam of light, which is really cool, especially if you're doing receptions at a wedding and you want more of like a nighttime vibe. It sort of darkens the outside of the images and it just points it. I'll try and find some images for you that I can throw up here so you can kind of take a look at the difference between it. Super cool. A few things that I will never ever shoot without is a speaker. I always have tunes playing every single shoot that I've ever done. Uh, if I forget to turn my speaker on, something feels really awkward and I remember what it is every single time. So it's always, always nice to have that going. I always have GoPros. These are fantastic for photographers because everything on social media is video. There's reels, you've got stories, you also stuff. People want video uh, with photographers. So we only shoot video when we need to. The great things about GoPros, that I've got this attachment on the bottom. It's like a little hot shoe. So when I'm shooting, this is how I'm shooting. So I've got this going constantly and it's capturing everything that my lens is capturing. And I can use that for reels. I can use that for creating slideshows for my weddings, whatever it might be. Amazing. And then I've also got another um, attachment option. I can put it on my tripod and I'll get my behind the scenes. I can never live without, obviously, is countless, countless, I was looking for them, couldn't find them, uh, countless SD cards. Honestly, you have to invest in quality ones, ones that you can switch out constantly. That can make all the difference as to, well, <laughs> For instance, I had a second shooter in the summer and she didn't use quality uh, SD cards and she didn't have it work. It didn't save properly. We've had issues. Fortunately, I was able to recover them, but uh, something like that happens, throw it away, start again, get a new one, get a new card. Because these moments that you're capturing for other people, you don't ever get a chance of capturing them again. Just make sure you have a cleaning kit with you. Mine's somewhere <laughs> in my very organized office. Um, Cases, covers for your lenses, always protect your gear. You can't ever replace them. I mean, you can, but it's gonna cost you another credit card limit. Um, I have a dual harness. This, like I said, when I shoot weddings, I absolutely love them. Um, this is a Rose Anvil leather harness, dual harness, and it is very comfortable. I can do another review on this because I've had a few in the past that I didn't like. They would sit too high on my traps and give me headaches and migraines, especially after an eight to 10 hour day. Um, so certainly some amazing gear. I've got all sorts of extras. I've got tripods that I use, but uh, I really don't want to keep you here all day because I'm sure you have other things to do as well. But uh, check out the links below. Those, all my gear that I typically use so that you can take a look through and decide if there's anything that's going to help you up level your business. Because I, 
my office keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger because I have so much crap, <laughs> to be honest. Even camera bags, I'm sitting right here and I can see at least six of them. So I'll do a review on that one day uh, and you can decide what camera bag will work for you. But in the meantime, I will be back constantly with some shorts, with lots of very specific information for you, behind the scenes, all kinds of stuff. If there's anything you would like to see in future videos, drop a comment below and I will add it to my list. See you next week.